Hello students. In this presentation, I shall brief you on Hiyama coupling, another coupling reaction that is Hiyama coupling. In the last uh, presentation, I had briefed you on Negishi coupling. Now, before going into detail into what Hiyama coupling is, let us quickly go through what a coupling reaction is. A coupling reaction involves bringing together two organic fragments in the presence of a transition metal catalyst to get another organic compound. Now the organic fragments which are brought together or the substrates which are brought together are organometallic compound and an organohalide. And the transition metal used in the catalyst usually are palladium or nickel. Now, depending upon the metal in the organometallic moiety or the organic metallic compound, we have got different coupling reactions. We have Negishi coupling, we have Hiyama coupling, we have Suzuki coupling, we have Stille coupling, Sonogashira coupling, etc. Now, in all these, basically it is this metal part which is different. In Hiyama coupling, the metal part of the organometallic compound is silicon. Now, coming to the mechanism of any coupling reaction, the catalytic loop, basically every coupling reaction has got four basic steps, that is oxidative addition, transmetallation, cis-trans isomerization and reductive elimination. In oxidative addition, the alkyl halide and the uh, nickel catalyst or the palladium catalyst come together and the palladium catalyst or the nickel catalyst, catalyst gets inserted between the alkyl group and the halogen group of the alkyl halide. See here you can see here the catalyst has been inserted, okay, it has been added to the alkyl halide. And here, the nickel or the palladium which was in zero oxidation state has been changed to plus two oxidation state. The transmetallation step, the metal, uh, sorry, the alkyl group or the aryl group or the organic moiety which is attached to the metal is transferred to the nickel or palladium to the transition metal. So here you can see the. Uh, R group from the organometallic compound has been transferred to the nickel or the palladium or the transition metal catalyst. In cis-trans isomerization, the, uh, there is a slight rearrangement of the ligands and uh, uh, organic groups attached to the transition metal. This is then followed by reductive elimination wherein the a carbon-carbon bond is formed between the two organic moieties and the nickel catalyst or the palladium catalyst is regenerated. Here the nickel which was in plus two oxidation state is brought back to zero oxidation state. So this is the catalytic loop for any coupling reaction. Common uh, mechanism, there will be slight difference particularly at this Path, that is in the transmetallation step. In most of the coupling reactions, the catalytic loop is similar. Now let us see what is Hiyama coupling. Now Hiyama coupling involves coupling of organosilanes with organohalides using palladium catalyst. So the transition metal catalyst is palladium catalyst. Uh, the organometallic compound is organosilane and then you have an organohalide. Now this is the general representation of Hiyama coupling. Uh, you have the organohalide, the organosilane, the palladium catalyst and you get another organic compound. Now here you see uh, for Hiyama coupling there is uh, uh, the presence of fluoride or a base required. Alright, now uh, the alkyl groups or the organic moieties uh, usually used for organohalide are aryl, alkenyl, alkynyl or alkyl and the organic moiety used for the organometallic compound is aryl, alkenyl and alkynyl. It is these two 
fragments which come to, which are brought together now why do we need the base here for hiyama coupling now in hiyama coupling uh, we have the we uh, during the transmetallation step the organic moiety from silicon has to be transferred to the palladium now this sic bond has to be broken now silicon and carbon they have a similar electronegativity so uh, breaking of sic bond needs activation of the bond or polarization of the bond and this base does that it will polarize the silicon carbon bond and this activation is usually done by base or fluoride ions like tasf tbaf which will lead to the polarization of this si silicon as uh, silicon carbon bond all right rate of uh, hiyama coupling can also be increased by using fluoro or alkoxy groups instead of alkyl group on the silicon uh, that is we need not use a base exactly we can use fluorine containing moieties also in order to polarize the silicon carbon bond now another approach to improve the reaction rate is using of sila cyclobutanes sila cyclobutanes okay these uh, ring compounds and uh, offer enhanced lewis acidity because of the angle strain it is cyclobutane four membered ring so it will be highly strained okay so this will also favor the activation of the bond so any of these three ways you can go for use of a strong base use of a fluoro or alkoxy groups attached to the silicon or use of sila cyclobutanes now silicon or a hiyama coupling is very much in uh, used because of the stability non toxicity and natural abundance of silicon now these three reasons are these are the three basic reasons why organosilicon compounds or hiyama coupling are commonly used now let us see a few examples of hiyama coupling here uh, i have taken two examples here you have an alkyl halide attached to i mean sorry uh, reacted with uh, silyl compounds here we have used your siloxy group methoxy group attached to silyl group and it is this uh, aryl group and the, this uh, alkyl group which is going to couple together to get a another organic compound all right in this example we have another example here you have got used silyl fluorides to activate to uh, uh, improve the reaction rate and you have the uh, alkyl halide also so these two couple together to get another organic moiety so these are two examples which i have taken one was taken i mean uh, published 2003 and the other one in 2004 now coming to the catalytic loop of hiyama coupling or the mechanism of hiyama coupling now as usual hiyama coupling also has four steps the oxidative addition transmetallation cis trans isomerization and reductive elimination and in oxidative addition the palladium catalyst gets inserted between the alkyl halide r and x okay in the transmetallation step you have got an extension over here uh, uh, as we said earlier the silicon carbon bond must be activated or must be uh, the silicon carbon bond must be polarized so for that we have to use a fluoride containing base <coughs> here they have used tbaf tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride now what does tbaf do tb the fluoride group on attached to the tbaf gets linked to the silicon so earlier silicon was attached to 
three fluorine atoms or three fluorine atoms was attached to silicon. Now with the addition of TBAF, one more fluoride comes and attached to silicon and this bond gets polarized. Silicon gets a partial negative charge. Now it is easy to remove this alkyl group from silicon and it can be transferred to the palladium. So this alkyl group from silicon can be transferred to the palladium once the silicon carbon bond is polarized and this polarization is done using TBAF or any base or fluoride containing base. Now after the addition of the alkyl group to the palladium the rest is the same. You have cis trans isomerization where there will be rearrangement and then reductive elimination wherein the carbon carbon bond will be formed and you get another organic moiety and the uh, catalyst is uh, regenerated and here the catalyst which was in plus 2 oxidation state is brought back to the zero oxidation state. So this is the catalytic loop or mechanism of Hiyama coupling. Now coming to the synthetic application of Hiyama coupling, we have got one synthetic application and that is in the total synthesis of Brasilinine. Now this uh, Hiyama coupling is also usually used for uh, in drug chemistry and also in uh, natural product chemistry. Now here uh, uh, you have this, this is an intramolecular ring closure reaction, intramolecular, see here this whole molecule, single molecule and uh, the molecule undergoes intramolecular ring closure and you get a uh, nonane group, a nine member ring. Okay, now what's happening, here you have the halogen group the alkyl group and here you have the silyl group. So this is the uh, organohalide part and this is the organosilene part. This carbon and this carbon combine together. <coughs> Rebond is formed between carbon 9 and carbon 1. Okay, it is to the carbon 9 that the halogen is attached and it is to the carbon 1 that the silicon is attached. Alright, and you get a 9 membered ring. So you can see here the numbering, etc. Alright, so this is the one of the uh, synthetic application of Hiyama coupling. Now another uh, synthetic application or you can say it's a modification of Hiyama coupling and that is called Hiyama-Denmark coupling. Now in Hiyama-Denmark coupling, uh, the coupling does not require a fluoride additive. Now that is a modification. You need not have a fluoride additive. Instead of that, we use we can use organosilanols, or uh, and uh, the reaction will be uh, with between organosilanols and organic halides. These two will be the coupling partners. Now the catalytic loop of Hiyama coupling is similar, I mean Hiyama Denmark coupling is similar to the Hiyama coupling. The only thing is in the transmetallation part, you don't have the activation of silyl bond, silyl carbon bond. Because you are using a silanol, here you have a silanol. Okay, and the silanol, the oxy, uh, silanol part, siloxy part is getting attached to the palladium. And then later on, this is removed, the uh, uh, silicon moiety is removed from palladium and the R group gets attached. Okay, so we can avoid using of fluorides in Hiyama Denmark coupling. That is another uh, modification of Hiyama coupling. As an example, we have here uh, for Hiyama Denmark coupling this reaction which does not involve any fluorides or base. Okay, so this is a very good modification of Hiyama coupling. So, this is in detail about Hiyama coupling. Any clarifications, if you have, please do ask me personally. Thank you.